get to Greg Peterson on the line. You can join him at uh, Husker Online. He also does work for Rivals and has for a number of years covering Nebraska football. And, of course, you guys are starved for Nebraska football talk, and I try to deliver the big programs and, of course, the Huskers, despite 4-8 and eight and being they're one of those relevant, not relevant programs. They're always relevant in terms of name, brand, and national uh, prominence, regardless of what happens on the field, but obviously have not been in the mix in recent years. Greg, uh, one of the things that I found strange in the transition to the Big Ten years ago, 2011, 2012, in that range, was you took a team that was one of the top five to ten defenses in the nation, led by Indomit and Sue. We all remember the Big 12 championship game, the win, the not win, the second left on the clock, but they they murdered one of the best offenses in college football in Colt McCoy, a scoring machine, shut them down to nothing. They were a dominant defense. They had nothing dynamic on offense. And then the the switch just flipped when they entered the Big Ten. Suddenly they can't stop anybody, but they got uh, the likes of a, a number of quarterbacks uh, that can't remember the kid, the dual threat, uh, Blake Martinez. Yep. Yes. Yep. Of course, they played quarterback for them, and uh, they're getting in these shootouts every week, and it was like, what happened in Nebraska football? So yeah. when is the defense coming yeah. back here? That was Taylor, Taylor Martinez. Blake Taylor was, Martinez. Yeah. Blake was his brother, his little brother. Absolutely, but, yes. Just, Boy, Blake. we <laughs> probably seen the kid play 20 times, and, uh, man, the, the memory goes. But, uh, yeah, absolutely, Taylor Martinez. Yeah, but, no, uh, you know, that the defense back then was built to play in the Big 12 and was geared to stop and – Big 12 offenses. And then, you know, it was a little bit of culture shock when they moved into the Big 10 where everybody played defense and, you know, the offenses were much, much different. You know, instead of trying to shut down a, a team that scores 50 points a game, now you're playing 17 to 14 games in the Big 10 most of the time, unless you're playing Ohio State, of course. But, uh, you know, it, it took some time and, you know, with different coaching staffs, I mean, the biggest thing right now is if you're a defensive back on the Nebraska football team, this is the first year that you've had the same secondary coach two years in a row going back since almost 2011. You know, it, it's just been a roller coaster with coaching staffs moving in, moving out. Um, you know, a big problem was uh, under Mike Riley. Uh, he was basically he, – he, fired one of his best friends, Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator, right as the team was trying to learn the 3-4 defense. And then they bring in Bob Diaco, and things just hit the fan at that point. But now, you know, there's stability there. The coach and the, the kids love the coaches. This coaching staff, it's a great coaching staff. You saw what they did at UCF, and they are such people person. And – Right now, you know, the continuity is there, and there, you're going to see a, a much different Nebraska defense coming into this season, especially with the defensive line that's developing um, with some young guys and some older guys mixed in there. And, uh, you know, your secondary, you've got a lot of young guys coming in there too. Um, linebacking core, definitely going to be young guys coming in there. But um, the big question right now would be the linebackers, in my, in my opinion. So let's start there, Greg. Uh, that was uh, the next question. What concerns you and also highlighting uh, some of the best players on the defense, if you could take us through the levels and who may be a breakout player and uh, who's a known factor and so forth? Yeah, um, you know, I'll start on the defensive line. Um, the, the Davis twins, they're poised to have a great year. Carlos and Khalil Davis out of Kansas, out of the Kansas City area. Um, it's their time to shine now. And, uh, you know, talking with Coach Tony Tuioti, the defensive line coach, you know, he's got very high expectations for them. Um, and then Ben Stilley uh, on the outside, he's about ready to explode himself too. You know, he had some nice, nice plays last year, and he's another freak of an athlete that, that's a local guy around here. Um, and then you bring in the senior Darren Daniels from, from Oklahoma State, the uh, graduate transfer. And he has stepped right in and took over that defensive line. He is definitely the leader. They are all behind him 100%. And uh, he's going to be a difference maker. And I asked Coach Tuioti a few weeks ago, you know, if he thought he was an NFL draftable guy last year. And he didn't really think so. But he said, watch out this year. 
he will be at the end of this year. Um, and, you know, you can, you got a guy coming in, a uh, very highly touted defensive end, and Ty Robinson, who was also in the All-American game last year out of Arizona. Um, people are expecting to see a lot of him, too. Um, and then uh, Daniel, Darren Daniels' little brother, um, you know, he's a, he's a big nose tackle, too. He's been around for a couple of years. And so I like the depth that they're starting to build up, and you've got a lot of guys that redshirted last year that are going to be available this year, guys like Tate Wilderman out of, out of Colorado. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how that shakes out this fall as well. 